Come on, somebody. Yeah, baby. Ah, so good. Oh, that's good. And y'all can go ahead and be seated. You can wave at somebody from a distance. You can elbow somebody from a distance. You can push somebody down from a distance. Mitch, I can't hug you today, bro. Yeah, I got a sippy cup. I'm not going to spill today. <laughs> Where's the little topper so that I can drink right from it, man? Last week, I spilled it all over the place. I tried to play it off, but at the end of the day, you can't play it off because water is dripping all over the place. And uh, Mitch came in and saved the day. Guys, thank you so much. You go are just an amazing worship team, man. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good to see you guys. I just want to look around the house, say what's up. All right, what's up? Look at all the peeps. Yeah, man. Even one Notre Dame fan. Sure, help us all, Jesus. I know there's probably two Spartan fans in the house, but. Craig, come on, man. Train up a child in the way they should go, man. Maize and blue. Oh, Jesus. How many Maize and Blue fans we got? We got any in the house? Thank you. Thank you. I wondered if I was in the right church, but we are. So I got a couple of things I want to just uh, talk to you about. First of all, those online, thank you so much for being there, being with us. If you want to be a part of being an in-person service, this is an amazing environment. We're having a blast, aren't we, people? This is good. If you want to be a part of this you can go on our website, you can go on our Facebook page, and you can sign up the actual date, how many people are coming, and uh, we want to make sure that we see all your faces through this lovely time. We're so thankful for the creativity and being able to do this kind of thing so we don't have to continue to stay distanced. And so, I mean, I socially distanced, yes, but not, you know, disconnected. And so thank you uh, for going online, for doing that. I know our weeks are filling up, but there will be other weeks that will be popping up here as this uh, continues, hopefully it won't continue much longer, and um, I will leave my comments to myself on that. But uh, we will, uh, <clears throat> hey, oh, <laughs> is that Vic? You can always tell when Vic's back in the house, right? All of a sudden, these comments start pouring. <laughs> hey, Vic, I want you to know we still have security here. I know numbers are low, but security is still in the house, so we can take you out. I don't mean physically, take you out of the building. <laughs> but uh, so that's that. The other thing is we, uh, every year, we, uh, on Thanksgiving, we do uh, turkey giveaways. Hey, oh. And this year is no exception. We're going to still be a blessing to our community. In fact, now is even more of an opportunity and more of a, uh, a green light for us to move forward and to do this uh, ministry. And I don't know if you've been a part of this. But we go and we deliver uh, full turkey dinners to families. Some of them are surprised to get them. Some of them have been signed up by y'all. And um, so normally what we have done is we've done a uh, Jimmy's fundraiser, and uh, that's not happening this year, obviously. But Women's Life is still partnering with us. And so what we want to do, and I'm sure many of you have these sitting around, and you don't want to go wait in line. But what we're doing is we are collecting. Now, this is a little different, but we got a bag or two at home, too. So we're going to collect pop bottles. We're going to collect uh, beer cans. <laughs> now y'all are like, yeah, the money will be raised now. Shoot, we got enough. <laughs> now, listen, we can make this really simple on the church by not dropping off 40,000 cans at the front of the building. And because uh, that would be a little not fun. But so there is a system. So if you have a question, please see Laura on that and she'll be able to fill you in. But if you want to take the cans in yourself and uh, minister to all those people online and just bring the finances in, that would be wonderful. Um, because I'm not taking them to the store. I'm just saying. You know, it's like, uh, but all this, and women's life is going gonna, is gonna to match. And so we're still believing that we can hit our goal to go out and be a blessing. So thank you to women's life, Marsha. And, and um, so we're going to make that happen. Sometimes when uh, 
when, when life throws you a curveball, you just have to hit it out of the park. You know what I mean? And so um, <clears throat> we're still going to do things. We're still going to be a blessing, and we're, we're going to be creative in the process. The other thing is, <clears throat> I don't know if you know this, but my wife was born 50 years ago today. Hey, yo, come on, somebody. <laughs> and, and my, because she's like one of the most biggest extroverts I know, right? And, uh, but I won't bring you up in front of everybody. Thank you. I thank you. Uh, I might get beat up later. But can we at least sing happy birthday to you because we love you? No? Can we sing it in Spanish? Uh, to you. Why do you got to start so high? Day to you. Sing it now. Happy birthday. I'm so thankful I now get a discount discount at Big Boy. Right? And so that's a great thing. <laughs> we get our discounts. It's a beautiful thing. We we got her she got her card in the mail, her A whatever card that was, yeah. And like, baby, we made it. We're in the cool group now. But we, we don't feel 50 at all. I mean, it just feels weird. We don't act 50. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. But, um, but we love you so much, and we're so thankful for you. And you are my world. And so happy birthday, sweetie. All right. Let's move on to uh, other things. Y'all doing well today? My uh, creativity was spinning off the charts when it came to titling this message. And so uh, I was ki I'm kidding, by the way, <laughs> because I'm like, how can I spin this creatively? And I uh, just finally said, skip it. We're going to call it Be a Faither. And um, this is what we're talking about today is continuing our journey of faith. Amen? Amen. How many of you a long time ago, you made a decision and you said, you know, Jesus... Um, I received you as my Savior, and you came to that moment of, you know, uh, making a faith and putting your faith in Jesus, right? How many of us made that uh, commitment, right? We, we have that moment. We remember that day. We remember that season. And I want to tell you today in 2020, the faith is no different than what it was back then. A-O. And so we come to the place of saying, um, you know, sometimes I, I hear people say this a lot. My, I feel weak in my faith, Pastor, and, and, I, and, I, and I've said that before early on in my walk with Jesus. I just feel weak in my faith, and I just I feel like, you know, I, 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 I don't feel full of faith, and I don't feel this, and I don't feel that. And I want to remind you something that Jesus said when he was with his disciples. That if you have faith of a mustard seed, that you can speak to a mountain and cause the thing to go into the sea. Yes, I know most of us have spoken to a physical mountain, and that physical mountain is still there. And you feel like, well, if I have faith, I can speak to the Rocky Mountains, and it will flatten and go into the sea. I don't think Jesus was talking physically about a mountain, but he was speaking to areas of our lives. In fact, specifically what he was speaking to here was the old covenant. He was speaking to something that was no longer going to produce fruit in our lives. And so I want to remind you today, you and I were not born under the old covenant law. The old covenant law was ended 2,000 years ago with our Savior. Can I get an amen this morning? We were born under the new covenant. And somebody poured a little mixture in our minds and in our hearts. Right? Somebody poured a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And they're working through their journey and all kinds of stuff. And, and over the years, God has been helping us kind of sift through and see what has been, is part of the new covenant thinking and what is part of the old covenant thinking. And listen, old covenant is full of shame. It's full of guilt. It's full of works. It's full of all kinds of stuff that keep us pressed down. The new covenant was all about us coming to a new day of living abundant life. Come on now, in its fullest. Woo! 
So this life we live of faith, a couple of questions I have. Is it perfect? No. In fact, I want to ask you today, what does, think about this, what does perfect faith feel like? What does it look like? What does, you know, that arrival point, because the Old Covenant was always about arriving to a place to make you and I feel like we were righteous enough and spiritual enough. The New Covenant is all about believing and having faith in what our Savior has done, causing us to become holy and righteous in our Father's eyes. If you are still living a life trying to work to get God to like you, that is what we call mixture of an old covenant and a new covenant. We know we're saved by grace, but we're still trying to live to get our Father to like us more. You cannot do anything else to get Father to like you more. You can do stuff to walk in His blessings more and to experience His favor more, but you can't do anything to help have Him like you more. He likes the snot out of you. In fact, I can't say it like this. we got kids in the room. So uh, I'll say it like this. He will love the out of you. And I say that with a, I'm serious. God has loved me so much that his love has come and saturated my heart that it's removed the stuff that is not like him. Faith was never meant to be a perfect journey. It was just meant to be a journey. In fact, the moments we see the greatest amount of faith, usually, not not all the time, but usually, is when we go through the roughest patches in life. Not when everything is going hunky-dory. Uh, contrary to what some people might like or hear or anything like that, is that our faith, our faith is tested from time to time. How many's faith has been tested over the last five months? Just a little bit, right? It could be your faith in the power of God. It could be your faith in the provision of God. It could be your faith in the sovereignty of God. And it could be a faith in maybe things you've heard over the years. Do I really believe that anymore? How come I'm not seeing some of it? It it could, testing in all of it. But I want to tell you that James tells us this. You ready to get started? Pastor Doug and Evan, I'm going to add one on there. James chapter 1, 2 to 4. It says, consider it pure joy. (laughs) I'll just leave it right there. Because over the past five months, I know some haven't considered it pure joy. Ain't nobody sitting there on their couch going, thank you, Jesus, for this coronavirus. Thank you, Jesus, for all these lies. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> it's like, come on. I can't see anybody. I can't connect with anybody. I, I got to do this. I got to do that. I mean, my life has changed. I don't know many people that are sitting around going, consider it all joy. I ain't seen anybody walking through Myers skipping because they got a mask on. Come on, let's be real for a moment, right? And nobody started out 2020 saying, I believe this this is the year of masks. And so I'm going to get prepared for this. (laughs) Consider it. He starts right out of the gate. Now this right here is kind of convicting in and of itself. Come on, can I get an amen, right? (laughs) You're like, oh, I already failed. He's not even through the whole verse yet. Come on, somebody. You know, it's like... (laughs) Consider it pure joy. In other words, a a joy that's not contaminated. And joy actually in the Greek, in the New Testament, means a calm delight. A calm delight. Let me tell you something. You can't get into a place of calm delight and pure joy until you learn to see higher than the storm actually is. 
That's why the eagle is so good, man. The eagle just shoots up through the storm. It says, I ain't messing with these winds. I ain't messing with this rain. I ain't messing with the hail. I ain't messing with the dark clouds. I'm going to shoot up through them so I can get above them so I can get to where I'm supposed to get going. And he says he will give you strength like the eagle. Hey, oh, somebody. All right, we've got to read scripture today. So... Verse 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces what? Perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you and I may be, may be mature. And complete, not lacking anything. Now listen, man, I don't know about you, but I don't do well in school testing. How many of you have test anxiety? You have studied the snot out of all the information. And you get in that, pa- that room and you start signing your paper on that paper, all of a sudden you feel like you forgot everything. Right? Can I remind you something about test time? The teacher is always silent. The teacher doesn't talk. Teacher's in the room usually. But the teacher doesn't talk. The teacher already did all the talking. The teacher already did all the training. During test time, it seems like the father is most silent. Are you with me today? When, when the testing's going on, the testing of our faith, we're like, where are you? Come on now, you know God's in the room. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. And it seems like during test time, we want God to speak the most. Do you know why we want God to speak the most? It's because we don't want to listen to what he said last. <laughs> No, I don't want to hear what you said last month. What are you saying today? The same thing I said last month, brother. Come on, are you with me today, church? You know I love you. (laughs) The people in the house are really mad at me right now. So online, I can't even see your faces. I love you. No, they're not mad at me. We have a good time. But it says, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything, not lacking anything, not lacking peace, not lacking strength, not lacking clarity, not lacking love, not lacking wholeness, not lacking grace. Are you with me today? Not lacking power, not lacking patience, not lacking. So if there's a lack, don't we have to link it back to how we are taking our test? Don't we have to link it back to, am I letting the testing of my faith produce perseverance? Or am I letting it produce an attitude? That's a good time to say at least an amen to make sure we're connecting here and you love me. So, listen, I didn't write this part of the Bible So when you get to heaven, you can yell at Timothy all you want, or James. You can yell at them all. Line them up. But it says that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Can I tell you something about people of faith? People of faith, have you ever noticed people of faith speak differently? They think differently. They pray differently. I'm talking people of faith, not just people who are born again. Ah, there's a difference now. Not just people who are saved by grace, know the worship songs, know the scriptures. I'm talking about people who are of faith. Have you met somebody that goes to church that does all the stuff, but you don't see much faith? Have you ever met somebody like that, right? Listen, I haven't been a perfect faither. Faith is not even a word, but it is today. Right? 
Look at somebody and say, be a faither. That's right. Be a faither. Hello, sir. It's so good to see you guys. Tim and Donna in the house. Hey, oh, somebody. Uh-oh, I just called you out publicly. <laughs> Security. Here's what we know about faith. Faith needs an action behind it in order for it to be real faith. Faith doesn't guarantee our security and comfort. We've all found that out. Come on now, somebody. But here's what I love. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Faith is always ultimately rewarded by our Father. As imperfect, as unbalanced, as off sometimes our faith gets, it's always rewarded by Father. I think this is why Jesus said the faith of a mustard seed and not the faith of a coconut or something, you know, the, the, the faith of a watermelon. Because if he gets something, you know, you know, Charlie Brown pumpkin, Faith of a Charlie Brown pumpkin, and you can speak to the mountain. You're like, well, what does that mean? It thinks huge. You know, it's like, what? It's the faith of a mustard seed. Listen, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been with Jesus. It doesn't even matter if you're not following Jesus yet. It takes the faith of a mustard seed to change your life and to change somebody else's life. Faith. I think about this story in Mark chapter 14. We're in verse 22 to 36. This is a moment, a very popular story. And I find myself in these popular stories in this season that we're in in life. I go back to the ones that we've heard all the time. I said, Lord, what are you speaking in these stories, you know? Last week we talked about Paul and Silas being in jail and deciding to make a decision to praise, even though they didn't do anything wrong. Hey, oh, somebody. And now you got this one where this is a moment where Jesus walks on water. But not only Jesus, this is the moment that Peter decided to get out of the boat and walk on water. And in verse 22, it says, listen, if I walked on water for real, man, I'd be on Oprah. I'd be on, you know, Dr. Phil. I'd be on all those shows. Could you imagine if that really happened? Yeah, that pastor over there, brother, walked on water. That'd be talked about, be on social media everywhere, all crazy. But can I tell you today, I tried it. I tried walking on water. I sunk like a rock. <laughs> like, well, my faith stinks today, man. <laughs> I need help in my faith. The only time I've ever walked on water is when it was frozen. Then I felt spiritual. I'm like, what's up? Huh? <laughs> I'm a spiritual man today. Yeah, Polo. But it's got this thing where, are we playing that game? I just went, okay, we are. Playing Marco Polo apparently, all right. Now everybody's getting their apps out. Let's do Marco Polo. But look at what it says in here. Verse 22, you got all these guys in a boat. I want you to think about this for a moment. All these guys in a boat, it's kind of dark outside, and um, immediately it says Jesus made the disciples get in the boat, go ahead of him, and on the other side, while he dismissed the crowd, verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. So Jesus wasn't even in the boat. He says, y'all go on the boat, I'm going to go pray. <laughs> I wish I could travel like Jesus. You all go grocery shopping, I'll meet you at the checkout aisle. You know, it's like, I'm going to pray in the car. But after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside to, uh, to pray by himself. Later that night, he was there all alone. And the boat was already con a considerable distance from the land. So the boat is out in the water, and the waves and the wind began to hit against it. Verse 25, shortly before dawn, 
Jesus went out to them. You ever notice that in the Bible they stayed up all night long? They had no ESPN to keep them going. I just think that the people tired all the time. Walking? Come on, are you with me today? They walked everywhere and stayed up all night. It's like, gee, your Lord, they didn't have Subway 24 hours. They didn't have Jimmy's Frozen. Anything to keep them going. You all want to do an all-nighter? We can do a cross-current lock-in. Some of you are like, I haven't done a lock-in since 1971. <laughs> do they still do those? <laughs> yep. And it's still the same thing, trying to separate the guy from the girl and, you know, keeping things on lockdown. But in verse 25, shortly before, I should go to verse 27. No, we're not. We're going to go to verse 25. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. That's a fun way to travel. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Of course they were. They said, it's a ghost. They said, and they cried out in fear, you know, it's a ghost. Oh, my goodness. And verse 27, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Can I ask you something? What is our response when we see God do something that is beyond our natural capability in our lives? I mean, think about that. When you see God do something, when you see God move in your life, when you see God show up in your life, when you see God, and, and maybe it's never happened before, you weren't even expecting it. I think, I, me personally, I don't know. I don't know how I would respond if I was in that boat and I saw but just my wiring, I'd be like, this is kind of cool. I mean, wouldn't you? How many of you would be instantly, all the sixes in the Enneagram, you'd be like, this ain't right. Something's out of line. Something's out of line. This ain't right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Anybody got a gun? What's up? Who's packing? Who's packing? Right? All the sevens would be like, count me in, baby. You know, out the boat on the water, right? Sorry if you don't know Enneagram, but, and, and you know, and you know the rule keepers, they'd be like, this is not how it's supposed to be. This is not. <laughs> then you got that one Enneagram, right, that, not the number one, but the one that says, how come I didn't think of that first? I should have been the first one out on that water. But, man, they were freaking out. And Jesus said, take courage, don't be afraid. Verse 28 says, he says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. I feel like these stories, these, these things that happened way back then are a prophetic place of where we are today. I feel with all of my heart that Jesus is still saying, come. Come. I feel like he's still telling his church, the bride, the body of Christ, come on. Get out of that place of comfort. Get out of that place of fear. Get out of that place that you're so used to. And come to a new place of experiencing the supernatural or experiencing my power and my joy and my peace. Can I ask you a question? Those online today, even in the house today, you may have never not have heard him say, come. But how many do you feel that God is kind of pulling you a little bit towards him at a greater level, right? How many of you feel like God is saying, okay, we've had a couple months here. Now it's time to take a step forward here and get back into the belief of the supernatural, the belief of my power, the belief of my glory. Are you with me today? How many of you are feeling this draw, this woo, that say we've had our moment of shock. We've had our moment of trying to figure it out. Now it's time for the body of Christ, for the bride of Christ to step up and and take their place again back on the water. I know some of you may not believe it, but the same power 
that was with you back in January is the same power that is with you in August. That will be with you in September. That will be with you at the voting place in November. Come on, somebody. The body of Christ has not been depowered. It's being empowered. Are you with me today? And I feel this thing in my heart. It's like, man, it's like, now listen, I've been through everything you guys have been through as well. And I've had my months of trying to figure it out. How are we going to do church? How am I going to do life? What's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? Oh, i got to wear a mask. You're looking at a guy who doesn't want to wear a mask, but I will because I love you and I love others. Okay, I'll get over that for a moment. But the issue is, I've had to work through everything you've had to work through. And yet when I quiet my heart long enough, I feel the Spirit drawing me and pulling me and wooing me and saying, come, come on, let's get back to that place. Come on, let's go, let's go. There's more to accomplish. accomplish. There's more people to reach. There's more things to do. Come on, we ain't done yet. We're not done yet. We're not running for the hills. We're not running for the caves. Come on, we're running to the people who need the peace and the grace and the love of Jesus. Are we okay today this morning? Y'all still love me? What did he say? You're working Tuesday all by yourself, Vic. (laughs) Oh, Vic. Oh, Vic. Let's just have a moment of silence and pray for this man. (laughs) And Gail's like, finally, thank you, right? Oh, I love that man. All right, so anyway, verse 29, he says, come. He said, then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. I think that was a smart move. Don't you? I think that was key. Let me say it again. I think it's key that when you get out of a place of comfort or you get out of the place of confusion or you get out of the place of anger, you get out of the place of entitlement and you get out of that place and you're saying, okay, the smartest move that Peter made at that moment was not getting out of the boat, it was walking towards Jesus. And I think where we falter a lot of times is it's not a matter of getting out of the boat and declaring a truth. It's the fact that you don't have the heart of Jesus. You're not walking towards Jesus. Are you with me today? See, we can have a truth but have a bad attitude delivering it. And it's not going to impact somebody's life. Are you with me today? Come on now. You know what I'm saying. Right information done with the wrong heart or wrong motive is still wrong. And so here Peter gets out of the boat, and he begins to walk towards Jesus. And I think about this story, and usually, you know, we we talk about, man, he walked on water. Woo-hoo, that's great. And it was awesome that a man walked on water. Come on, how many would dig that? You walk on water, right? But, man, the fact that it says he walked toward Jesus is the key. Verse 30 says, but when he saw the wind. He was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. You cannot focus on two things at the same time, church. You think you can. We think we can. But we cannot see two things at the same time. We know there's stuff around here. But our eyes focus on one thing at a time. Peter did not sink. And here, here's the problem sometimes we run into. I run into it as well. Is that we can be moving. Our movement can be towards Jesus. But our focus can be on somebody else or something else. And that's when we get in trouble. Are you with me today, church? And other people can be like, wow, they're so spiritual. They're so this. They're so that. Wow, they're look at them go. But people don't know that you're really sinking. You're sinking in despair. 
You're just sinking in hopelessness. You're sinking in entitlement. You're sinking in fear. But yet, it looks like on the outside we're going in, we're in a movement of, towards Jesus, but our eyes have been so on other things. Peter didn't sink until his eyes got focused on the waves and the winds, even though his movement was going there towards Jesus. Here's what's so good about the grace that we are under. Here's what's so good about the goodness of our Father. Is that verse 31 says, immediately. Can you say that with me this morning? Immediately. It's not that God was up there going, no, Peter, I'm going to let you learn your lesson, pal. When you're this close to drowning, then I'll pull you up. When those little bubbles are starting to come out of your nose, then I'll reach down and I'll pull you up and we'll do some mouth-to-mouth. And I think that's sometimes where we get the mixture of who our God is and what our God is like. Is that many people believe that God is not immediate to reach down and to save us or reach down and deliver us. But I do believe I still believe, I don't know if anybody else in here believes, hopefully you do, I think you do, that he's still a present help in the time of our need. That when we call on the name of the Lord, that he's still willing to show up and to save us spiritually, emotionally, relationally. Are you with me today? Come on now. He's still willing to immediately move. It doesn't mean everything changes and everything becomes great at that moment. But he does keep us from dying and sinking. I'm thankful that our God is an immediate kind of God. The moment that we begin to put our eyes back on him and we begin to release that praise like Paul and Silas did last week and we begin to release our hearts of gratitude and we begin to love him, I'm telling you, it's not a week from that moment that he invades your praise. It's in that moment that he shows up because he loves the snot out of you and he's eager to have a fellowship with you. He's eager to have a connection with you. It doesn't matter what age you are. Man, I remember being a kid and singing songs that that I knew from the Baptist church, we bring the sacrifice of praise, praise, praise unto the house of the Lord, 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 Lord. we bring the sacrifice of praise, you know, hey, that's all we had, we didn't have all these cool songs, yes, Elaine, that's about perfect, (laughs) anybody remember that song, okay, good, I want to make sure I'm connecting with a few people, I don't want to be here partying all by myself and you'd be like, who is this clown, you know? How many remember that one? Spring up a well within my soul, spring up a well and make me whole, 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 spring up a I mean, it's like, I know, right? How did we ever follow Jesus, right, these songs? But that's all we had. That's all. I'm trying to think of some other ones too, man. Oh, yeah, you know that one. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. How many remember that one? That was like the last night of camp when everybody cried all over the place and got saved. Doug's was, uh, uh, his last night of camp, the big crying day was, you're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. (laughs) Everybody crying. It's like... Would you like Pastor Doug to come up and sing that for us this morning? (laughs) I got a double thumbs down. And now I got two people mad at me today, so that's good. My wife and Doug. (laughs) I won't sing happy birthday to you again for another year in front of people. I mean, how did we get on all those songs? Is that what you call a classic rabbit trail right there, I'm thinking? 
Verse 31. We're winding down here, people. The picture we want you to see, or I want you to see this morning with Peter, is that Peter is a perfect picture for us of a person with imperfect faith. See, some of us believe that, man, if I walked, if I was one of those disciples and I got to see Jesus every day and walk with him all day long, we'd be like, I'd be so fired up. I'd be so alive. And I'd be so that. And I'd be like, no, you wouldn't. You and I would struggle with the same things we do today and the same things they did then. In fact, the struggle for them was a lot greater than what the struggle is for us. Please get this. They were under a government persecution, not wear a mask persecution. I'm talking about death. I'm talking about the real deal. They were in a place where the old covenant was ending. The pressures of the powerhouses of religion, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all those religious clowns that that pressured and stole money from people. They were having to transition their mindset to a new covenant of grace and get out of shame and get out of fear and get out of the control. And they had to get into an entirely different place. You see, I don't think we'd be any more fired up or any more empowered having walked physically with Jesus just because they were in it, because their lives struggled just like ours. Here's a man that walked on water, was immediately saved, and denied Jesus three times before he died. And then in Acts chapter 2, preaches the greatest sermon ever known to man. I want to tell you today, I don't care where you are in your season of faith. I don't care if you feel weak. In your weakness, he's still strong. Come on, somebody. I don't care if you feel like you have no faith. The fact that you're still uh, waking up a little bit to him tells me there's a little faith. I don't care if you feel like you're on the mountaintop of faith. It does not matter that the story is not done yet. Your sermon is not done being preached yet. Your story is not done being told yet. So let's stop talking like it's over with. There's more to be done. There's more to be praised. Come on, are you with me today? It ain't done yet. I feel like we're just getting started. Because I feel like the church is starting to see some things that maybe they haven't seen for a long time. That we are the bride of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And as long as we got our eyes fixed on Jesus, we have the head of the body. We have the head of the church. And we're going to be okay. Well, what if that? God will help us through that. Well, what if that? God will help us through that. Well, what if this happens? Then God will help us through that. What if this happens? Then God will help us through that. Well, what if that happens? Then God will help us through that. And we'll be in 2025 going, look at what God helped us through. We'll be in 2030 going, look what God helped us through. We'll be in 2040 going, dang, I'm old. 2040. Holy. We'll be getting double discount at Big Boy. Is that even a thing? Do you get double discount? (laughs) You walk in and it's like, yes, whatever you want, sir. (laughs) But I remember in the 70s, I remember in the 70s when I was a kid, I remember the church saying, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. And people stopped advancing the kingdom of God. And they got so bunkered down in a church like a cave running for the hills. And yet we're here in 2020. And the earth is still groaning for the sons and daughters to manifest the kingdom of God. Don't you want to see it happen? Don't you want to be a part of this? Then we got to become great faithers. And I'm not talking perfect. I'm talking about people who continually willing to step up to the plate, continually willing to get out of the boat, continually willing to walk towards Jesus, and continually keeping our eyes on our Savior.
faith. There's people all over the world right now that are being awakened to Jesus. All over. I'm not even talking about hundreds and thousands at one place. I'm talking about individually. There are people that are being awakened to the goodness of our God. Where we for years have created an environment, and we're going to continue to do so, for people to come and for people to be invited to come. And now we have an opportunity to say, you know what, we don't have a place where you can come, but I can bring it to you. I can bring this to you. We serve a great God. We serve an awesome God. He hasn't forgotten who he was or who he is. Last time I read, he's the same yesterday and today and will be forever. Maybe you're here today and you find yourself, you know, you got out of the boat, but you've been sinking a little bit in some of that stuff. I promise you there's an immediate hand that will show up and begin to pull you up out of that. Can we stand on our feet this morning, church, and those of you who are at home, and if you want to stand up, you probably can't do it if you're in your car. We're so thankful for you following and being a part online and being a part of just connecting. If you believe we got a good God this morning, I want you to send an A-O on there, right? Let us know. You're with us. Let us know that you're connecting. Verse 31, I'm going to end with this. Verse 31 says it like this. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Then he said this little quote. He said this little thing. He says, you of little faith. Now sometimes we hear that and we hear that as a pretty... You know, uh, I'm, a, I'm slapping you upside the head and I'm mad at you and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes, you know, when I, I play sports my whole life, and sometimes you need a coach, right, that says, hey, wake up. There's more inside of you than this. We're not going to roll over in the second inning. Let's go. Come on. Get the passes going. Come on. Get out there and play. Come on. Get that passion life. Sometimes you need a coach that gets in your face and just – kind of wakes you up to who you are and the potential that you have. So I don't see it as Jesus being mad at these guys. I see it as him getting in their face saying, come on, let's go, let's go. Dude, you don't have that weak faith. I'm right here. You don't need to struggle like this. I'm with you. He says, he reached out, he says, you have little faith. And he says, why did you doubt Why are the waves bigger than me? Why is the news bigger than me? Can I I make it in our terms? Why is that post that you saw bigger than me? Why is somebody else's fear bigger than me? I just think we got an opportunity today. I don't know who individually watched online or here in the house today. I don't know. We've got an opportunity to say, help, save me. Sometimes when all you have or need is Jesus, the prayers are smaller. Are you with me today? Lord, save me is a pretty pointed prayer. Help! Help! I'm sinking in my depression. I'm sinking in my 
despair. I'm sinking into stuff. Help me, help me, help me. Why did you doubt? When they climbed in the boat, they, when Jesus got in the boat with them, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. You're the Son of God because the winds died down? Or you're the Son of God because you're just the Son of God? You're him. You're the Messiah. And I'm glad that the, boat, the winds died down, but i got to ask you a question. Do you need God to fix everything in your life in order for you to declare him as the Son of God? Or can you begin to declare him the Son of God, the Savior of your life? Are you with me today? Come on now. The Messiah, even though there's still some winds and some waves that are splashing around you. Because being a faither isn't about waiting until something gets fixed. It's about praising him in the midst of something that needs to get fixed. It's about worshiping him for who he is and what he is, not what he can do for you. Yes, we're thanking him for what he can do, but I don't worship him because of what he can do for me. I worship him because of who he is. Being a faither is about being in the moment, realizing, yeah, man, you got waves crashing around you. You've got stuff being said. There are concerns about the future in different areas. But the issue is we will still worship him with everything we got because he's worthy to be worshipped. We'll still praise him today because he's worthy. We're going to honor him today because he's worthy today. We don't know what the future holds, so I'm not going to let the future get in the boat with me. I'm going to let the present get in the boat with me. Me. I'm going to let Jesus get in the boat with me. How many today are saying, I want Jesus in the boat with me? Come on. If you need him in the boat today, I'm going to ask you to put your hands in the air where you are. And we're just going to invite him into the boat with us. If you're home today and you say, I need Jesus in the boat, come on. Come on, let's sing that.